Well, it is Friday. Fri lucky, 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 Friday the 13th. So, Crazy Quilty March, it is challenge number 13. And on your calendar, which if you didn't download a calendar yet, you can get it below the video. I actually need to put it on the website too, uh, somewhere easy to find. So today on 13, I wrote Lost Love. Whoops, hit the mic. Uh, so lost love. It's not like high school lost love or any other lost love. A lost quilting love. So this could go a couple ways, but what I decided to do was show you one of my personal lost loves, a quilt top that I started. I don't know. I didn't look at the documents here because <laughs> I'm going to do it with you. So I don't know how long it's probably 25 years ago, maybe, when I did this, this is a story quilt. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. Uh, and then I'll tell you what the challenge is for today. Okay, so I, will, I don't even know how I started this or why I started it, but I wanted to do a story quilt. And so what you're looking at is Nana's Peppermints. That's the name of it. And my grandmother, Nana, Mabel Krantz. <laughs> so Mabel, um, Nana was a telephone operator for Bell Labs in, in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, the capital of Pennsylvania. Uh, so she would go to work in the beginning and plug all this stuff in and eventually, you know, went all computerized. And uh, she was a trainer at the end, towards the end of her career. But the big thing is when we were kids, uh, Nana always had a big black purse. And that's what you see at the bottom. See the big black purse with the handle? And actually the purse is open. That's what this is reflecting here, is that the purse is open because Nana always took a big bag of red and white peppermints and would just open it and dump them in her purse. So as kids, she would give us peppermints. You know, we, basically we would, you know, go rooting around in her bag and she says get a peppermint out but she did this because it helped soothe soothe her throat while she talked all day long uh, at her job and so I wanted to tell the story of Nana's peppermints and I was a pretty newish quilter when I started this uh, so I wasn't you know I, I have good drafting skills so basically I was drafting everything and Amazingly, I've kept a folder of it all together. So you want to see? I do. I haven't looked in this folder, and I do not know how long, how long I was in here last. But I drafted all the peppermints. So there they, there they are. And I will show you up close here. I hand pieced them because it gave me more accuracy. So what I had to do was draft the shapes onto plastic. I'd forgotten this part. So here are all of the shapes for the, for the peppermint so that I could make the peppermint swirls, the candies. And there's a whole baggie here of these. Look. <laughs> and a piece of paper. What do I got on there? So, oh, it tells me how many. I'm just going to do, here, we'll look at it together. So, like, five small, four large, and then the background is these pieced pinwheels. So, these guys here are a pinwheel block. So, I've got the applique on top of the pinwheel block, and so I was drafting that. <sighs> I really love this. It has to be finished someday. The fabrics were of the time, which don't look too bad, but let's see. What do I have here? This looks like a full-size scale. Here is a sketch of what I was doing. Did I date it? Ha-ha, I did date it. <laughs> what date do you think it is? 94, May 15th of 94. So here, it's a little hard to see, but it's pencil on some drawing paper. I've got the, down at the bottom, I've got the bag, and then the peppermints, and then I sort of just sketched out what I was going to do over here. And then on this, whoops, I just, something flew on the floor. I'll have to go get that. I'll 
I'll have to get that. This is, looks like, there I was making more notes. I just can't believe I still have all of this stuff. All of it. Look at it. So, this is how, this is how you drafted back in 94, before I had a computer. So, I basically drafted this quilt full size on paper. So, it is, this is so fun. And I've got all the shapes so that I could cut them out and knew like how big the peppermints would be and where they would be. I'm not sure I did quite as many as were on that drawing. Uh, one little piece of paper fell on the floor. I'll have to go get that. Wow. So one of the things that happened, I, I, just, I know why I stopped working on it. Because I had not learned to applique yet, either by machine or by hand. I had, I was doing, you know, I had learned obviously because they are, these are applique down, but that was the extent, you know, I, I, I could do some, uh, but I wasn't doing, my skill sets in 94 for applique were still not super strong. They kind of picked up after this, but when I got to this point, I knew that it, I wanted to actually put the words Nana's peppermints. I wanted to put words on the border um, or somehow across this. And I, th I can remember being stuck. I can remember having this and having it on the wall and thinking, how, how do I want them to look? How do I want to applique them? Uh, these were hand applique. And I guess I just didn't feel like I had maybe the best skills yet for doing lettering. Or maybe at the time, I don't know, maybe I wanted fancier lettering, which would have been harder to applicate rather than sort of chunky letters. So I remember just stopping. I can just I can just remember that and thinking, dang, I don't know how to get the, the words on here that I want. I know how to do it now. I have skills. <laughs> I have a lot more experience. And so I know the interesting part, though, is I didn't really leave myself any place to put them. Uh, there, you know, nowadays, if I were designing this, I would leave some border area so that I could put, you know, Nana's peppermints, like up, like I might put Nana's on one side and peppermints on the bottom, something. But I gave myself with this particular layout, there's no room. Now there is this space here. So if I wanted to applique something smaller, you know, I could do Nana's peppermints like a, like that. And it could be a smaller, um, you know, wording. It wouldn't have to be quite, quite so big and expansive. So that is a, that is something that I could, could look at. So fun, <laughs> fun to discover. So let's talk about lost love. Let's talk about your lost love because it might not be a top like this. Uh, you know, maybe. Maybe you have, uh, you know, let's first talk about quilts. Let's first about talk about quilt tops. Um, uh, you know, I'm, my goal was for you to find something that you really had sort of given up on and want, now you have better skills. And so you can bring it back and you can actually, you know, work on it and finish it. Uh, but not everybody has an older UFO, I believe it or not. <laughs> Some of you are newer quilters, so you don't even have that. Uh, you know, you're just learning. But a lot of you, a lot of you that are following me, <laughs> out of like about 250,000 of you, a lot of you have been quilting a while. And so you probably have some sort of project that got shelved. Uh, and I'd like you to just go and look at it today. You don't have to work on it. Uh, be awesome if you worked on it. But what I like you to do is just get it out. I like you to take a picture of it. Share it in my group at Facebook if you're there. If you're not in Facebook with me, you should be. <laughs> but if you're not, uh, just tell me about it in the comments uh, where, you know, where, you're, where you're reading this here at YouTube. Because I would like to hear about that lost love. If today you don't have an older UFO or something you got stuck on that you can sort of bring out and look at it with fresh eyes, because that's really what today is. Look at something with fresh eyes. Instead, maybe you have a pattern that you've been eyeing. Something, occasionally people will say in the group, what is the hardest pattern? Or this pattern looks hard. If you've been quilting even a short period of time, something that looked intimidating on day one, you have better skills now. You're not 
uh, as green, you know, you know how to do things. So pull out a pattern that you've been mulling about and you're thinking, oh, that might be beyond my skill set. Pull it out today and look at it again. Evaluate whether it really is beyond your skill set or whether you now can tackle it or at least put it on your schedule to tackle it. You know, so yeah, that's your challenge. Lost love on Friday the 13th. Sounds a bit sad. Why did I do that on Friday the 13th? I had no idea. <laughs> but we're going to make it happy because in the end, you're going to pull it out and you'll probably realize that your skill sets are better or your interest is different. Maybe you don't even want to do it anymore. And then you'd be like, okay, I can check that off. I no longer want to do a double wedding ring. I thought I did, but now I don't. You know, whatever it is. Uh, and if you're here watching on YouTube, if you would subscribe down below. And I found out that if you're on an iPhone and you can't see it, you can't see the bell, you subscribe, but then you can't see a bell after you subscribe, you are probably not in the app. Uh, iPhone, you need to be in the app and not on a browser. Uh, everybody else should see it. It's pretty clearly listed. Uh, so you want to subscribe and click the bell. Okay. I love you. I can't wait to see what you find and show me. This is going to be so exciting. Oh, tomorrow. Tomorrow is Quilt Day. It's International Quilt month march but tomorrow is quilt day and i will do i'm going to try a live on youtube i've never done that so i'm going to try it on saturday and uh, i will do a live at my facebook group too so yay <laughs> very excited uh thank you so much for being here i love you and i will see all of your first loves have a good day